Coming up on The Real Deal, pain at the pump. You're tired of hearing it, and you'd have to be blind to not see the skyrocketing prices at the gas pumps. The question is, why are prices so high? Is it raging conflict in the Middle East? Exploding demand for oil in Asia? What if it's not that simple? Who's really to blame? Greedy Wall Streeters? And how about you, the guzzling consumer? Is $5 the new normal? We're going to learn something today. Oil insider Joe Kennedy is here to talk about the future. And Leah McGrath Goodman has the inside scoop on the present, the real deal on gas prices and America's fuel future. All right, everybody, welcome to The Real Deal. The big item on the table, it is no surprise. Gas prices, oil prices, the connection to your daily life, nothing scares us. Nothing worries us about what's going on in Washington, what's going on in the world, and how it's impacting our families, like gas prices. All we have to do on a TV show is throw up a map with the numbers, and you care about it more than you do the weather. Why? Because it's crunching our pocketbooks. It's disposable money. We're afraid that we're not in control of it anymore. Well, why is it happening? It's all about the Middle East, right? That's why we're in Libya, right? They have such a big slice of oil supply. Not that simple. How do we know? Out of Saudi Arabia, the head of OPEC, right? He comes out and says, People who buy oil to resell for supply and use aren't asking for more oil. So we're not going to supply more. And everybody's like, what? Are you mad? The price is going up. Ah, what we're seeing here is not normal supply and demand. This is about a third factor on prices, different than geopolitics, different than the Middle East. It's going on right here at home. Wall Street traders, mercantile exchange traders, using oil like other bargaining chips, like stocks and the like, on their Wall Street gambling tables, driving the price up. How do I know? Because of our first guest, a great guest indeed, Leah McGrath Goodman. The book is called The Asylum, just came out. This book, worth reading, why? Because Leah got deep, deep inside the mercantile exchange, oil traders. She beautifully depicts them as renegades in the Wall Street game, goes deep into their backgrounds, let you know who these people are. But more important to us today is what they're doing. They're trading oil, they're running the price up, they're trading like anything else and that's driving our price up. Leah, thank you very much for coming on the show. A great pleasure. I know you had to hustle to get here. First off, let's deal with the easiest thing, telling me I'm wrong. What I've just laid out is the supposition <laughs> that there is this third factor, these traders that are driving price, true or false? Uh, well, right now we have three times more speculation than we had before the latest mm -hmm. Iraq war. So. You tell me if that's going to affect things. That's good. You answered my question with a fact. Very nice. Very nice. Now, help <laughs> me understand this. Help us all understand what happened here. 1983, the rules changed about trading oil. Will you explain this to me? What happened and what did it lead to in terms of how oil is dealt with today? Well, in 1983, we really had our first modern day free trading oil market. And that was really started by a young man. He was in his late 20s, his name was Michael Marks, and he was really trying to save what was a defaulted potato exchange in downtown Manhattan from insolvency. And they started trading uh, crude oil along with heating oil, natural gas, and in addition, gasoline. And people jumped on it so fast that within a year, crude oil was the most highly traded commodity on earth. So by 1984, this nothing market had become Amazing. It just rose up out of nowhere. And well, of course, it has so important. The main so, one. so important, so vital, so many points of interest, so directly tied to the American household. It's beautiful. Traders are yes. always trying to look at relevancy of their markets to daily consumption. What's better than this? Let me ask you, though. Right now, when we hear from Saudi Arabia and the OPEC people say we're not going to supply more oil, everybody gets scared. We think that they're choking us. But understanding the situation the way you do right now, are they wrong? I find it a little disingenuous, if I may, that the OPEC oil ministers say they're concerned about high prices effect on ordinary consumers and then cut supply. 
Mm. When you go back to the market, they'll say, it's market fundamentals that's causing all this. You know, demand is too high and there's just not enough supply to go around yeah. or there's a fear that in the future there won't be enough supply to go around. I want to know if any of these people can get their story together. They can figure it out, but it's either the fundamentals or it's speculators or high prices will cause people to not buy. If the OPEC ministers are so concerned about that, they know how they can lower prices, they pump more oil. Now, what about the fact they're making, though, Leah, is that the people who buy oil to then use and put into people's burners uh, and make into gasoline aren't asking for more, that this price pressure is really coming from the traders. What do you think of that? I think that's highly likely. Uh, I've had a number of oil traders at top banks and hedge funds contact me over the last few weeks. The terms that they're using are, and this is kind of a geeky term, Chris, uh, they say price discovery is broken, meaning discovering the true price of oil has been ruined by the erosion of all the rules and regulations over the past 20 years of this market. It has gotten it right off the rails. And if we don't have a discussion about this, we can expect a lot more of these high prices. All right, let's have the discussion here, right? Because people who watch The Real Deal, they're very <laughs> savvy, they're very concerned, and they feel that everything around them is spin. So here's the supposition. Why is mm -hmm. oil allowed to be traded like some stock or some kind of bond when it is so vital and now we're seeing the negative implications of allowing this decision is that now they're boosting our gas prices irregardless of what the suppliers say why is it allowed the reason this all began is because taking on an oil drilling project takes many many years and it has almost bankrupted oil companies many times so risk management and the need to manage risk and lock in prices is real. And that's where speculators come in. They take that risk away from the driller and they take on the risk. And that is a service. The problem now is, is there's just way more speculators than there are people who are actually doing hands-on activity with the oil itself. So a lot of the traders have no intention of ever taking a barrel of oil. And they're just in it for the casino aspect, right? The casino and if aspect. You have too many people. Yes, if you have too many people who are there for the casino and not for actual risk management, this is what you start to see. And this is something that was understood during the Great Depression in the years following. That's why many rules were put into place. Those rules were eroded beginning with the Reagan years, and they continue to be eroded to this day, even with the Financial Reform Act. What was the pressure to erode them? Who was putting money in pockets? Why did it happen? The first uh, big erosion was in 1991. Goldman Sachs asked for a huge kind of get out of jail, jail free card. Uh, it was called an exemption. And once they got it, everyone wanted one. And then they started getting crop dusted across Wall Street. It allowed traders to take large positions in the oil market without any intention of taking supply of oil or other commodities. Now, let me ask you something. And the it traders just went will say, on from there. Let me, let me get in there for a second, Leah. The traders will say this. Well, this yes. is no different than wheat or corn or f any other commodity. Yes, they're tied to food and people need food, but we allow it there. This is the same yes. thing. Fair analysis? No, it's not fair. Uh, the agricultural markets have had uh, a huge amount of protection from the farm lobby. Mm. Farmers have been very savvy to the fact that speculation can wreck price discovery, meaning the real price of a product versus the speculators getting involved too much. And as a result, in this country, we have rules for agricultural products on the trading of them that do not apply to energy. I want to say that again. They do not apply to energy. They do apply to farm products. So with what we need the most, gas and oil, forget about our personal habits and using less. Right now, yeah. what we need the most yes. has the least regulation and allows speculators to be the most wild in this market. Yes, and we wonder why that is. I say, uh, don't think it's not on purpose. Why, would it, why do you think it is? What is the intentionality? Is it because the lobby is so strong to allow the trading? Why is it happening? Well, Wall Street and uh, Wall Street in particular has loved this market from the start, mm. and because it's it's been considered a backwater market for a long time, oil traders are considered sort of a rare animal, and now there's a ton of them, so they're not anymore. But yes, it was protected very much by Wall Street. Rules were eroded, and, and the same rules that eroded energy were the ones that led to the financial crisis, the erosion of rules on financial trading. Boy, in a time where we credit default swaps. In a time when everybody's talking about political will, what better to address than this? And yet everyone is silent on it. Leah, thank you very yeah. much for coming on and demystifying and thank informing you. us. I'm holding up the book again. You can't see me, but I promise I'm doing it. The Asylum. It's a good read <laughs> if you're wondering about gas prices because there's a story in here you have not heard. Leah, thank you very much. That was very good. We're going to take a break here. When we come back on The Real Deal, we heard from Leah about why things are the way they are. We're going to talk to a man who knows a lot about energy, how people get it, and what you could do yourself 
to ease the pain at the pump.